on June the 6th, I think it's a Friday, um, so about five weeks time-ish. Um, so the aim of today is as follows. My name is Mike Murray. Um, for the past 15 years, I've been Chief Examiner for AQA A-Level PE, been writing exam papers incessantly, stopped doing all that rubbish um, in September. So for this current exam, I've not written the paper, I've not seen the paper, so I can make um, educated guesses as to what may or may not be on the paper and the sort of questions you might receive on the day and hence the sort of um, answers that you should be delivering. Now, assuming you've all heard that, could someone please turn off their click um, on their tick so I can see that people are hearing me as well. Thanks, guys. That's great. Thanks very much indeed. Okay, so what students should have in front of them is um, a printout of PowerPoint slides. These PowerPoint slides are going to be repeated on the screen, as you can see. But what we're going to do is just add um, material to that, and it's revision. So the assumption is that you can do most of this stuff, um, and if you can't, then you've got to seek help. And the help, realistically, comes from the person sat next to you. This is not going to be cheating time. This is revision. We're going to help each other. Workers twos, working threes. If there's only four in the class, great. Then workers fours. Uh, if you're really struggling, ask your teacher. And, of course, if you really are struggling, get your teacher to ask me. Um, the way the system works, I'm in complete control of the screen. So if you do have any questions and you type them into the chat window, please be aware that me talking and me typing at the same time is very, very difficult to do. I'm a man. I'm, men can't multitask, can they? So it's, it's that sort of idea. If a question comes up on the chat window, it may be a delay before I can reply to it. But I will reply. I promise I will reply. Okay? So you've got a printout, hopefully, of this PowerPoint slides. Um, and we're going to work through the following topic areas. Um, chosen by me. Chosen by me, because I think they're the sort of things that might come up in the exam. It's pure guesswork. It's based on what's been on before and what comes up fairly regularly and having a guess of what the new um, principal examiner might do in terms of questions. And there is no, it's not cheating. I've not seen the paper. This is pure guesswork. So think something about breathing might come up because the mechanics of breathing has not been up for a long time, nor has diffusion. So we'll look at that as well. I think the heart wasn't on last year. <clears throat> Excuse me. The heart wasn't on last year, so we'll look again at cardiac cycle and a particular aspect of the heart, cardiovascular drift. We'll have a look at that as well. Um, there's always a question on anatomy, and maybe about time there was a question on press up. Was it the anatomical um, explanation of the press up? Nothing recently on Hick's law, reaction time and um, psychological refractory period, so we'll look at that fairly briefly. Nothing recently on insight learning, so maybe we'll think about that sort of um, response. And then from the social cultural area, there hasn't been much um, in terms of participation and ethnicity, so again, we'll, we'll look at that sort of area. And then towards the end of the session, it's quite a long part of the session, um, we'll look at a couple of areas from Question seven, that compulsory um, prose-based question at the, on the paper. Um, and we'll look at areas that, again, thinking have not been examined recently, therefore might come up. And try and think, maybe, of a question um, that might be on the paper for question seven. Or certainly, if it was my turn again to um, write the paper, what sort of question I might ask. So that's the plan for the day. We will have a five-minute break um, halfway through on the way towards one o'clock. Is that okay? Okay, on the assumption that everyone's still alive and breathing, let's get on with the, the show on the road. Okay, so, sort of questions that come up, and you can see these are past paper questions. Um, the first one, explain the mechanics of breathing that allow a performer to fill the lungs with air during exercise. The second one, about tennis, explain how increased levels of carbon dioxide and acidity in the blood cause breathing rate to rise. There's a spelling mistake there. Explain how increase in or increased increase in levels. Shouldn't be an S, should it? Sorry about that. Okay, so our aim is to be able to answer these sort of questions. A question maybe about mechanics, which will tend to be um, a three-ish mark question, and a question about um, regulating breathing rate and that sort of thing. Okay, 
So next slide. Breathing rate. Breathing rate is worked out by detecting stuff like what increases. We'll go back to the previous question there. Bottom question there. Increase in levels of carbon dioxide and acidity. That's the big clue. When you exercise, levels of acidity, levels of carbon dioxide always increase. Acidity, carbon dioxide. Now, the important thing about this, if you haven't been told this by your sensor, is that this process, increased levels of carbon dioxide, increased levels of blood acidity, occurs all the time you exercise, and it's these two um, chemical changes that regulate not only breathing, but also regulate heart rate, and also regulate the distribution of the blood. So whenever we exercise, levels of carbon dioxide, changes to blood acidity are detected, and it will affect heart rate and breathing rate and where blood is flowing to. Now that those changes to the blood chemistry, that's what it boils down to, more carbon dioxide makes the blood more acidic is blood chemistry, are detected by tissues, um, tissue receptors called chemoreceptors. And these chemoreceptors then send nerve impulses. And they'll send nerve impulses to the brain. They'll send it to the part of the brain. Well, you should be able to do this, guys. Come on. I would have thought you could all do this. Where do the nerve impulses go to in terms of breathing rate changes? Ten seconds to do that question. And hopefully, you've dragged out the idea that these nerve impulses go to, well, you may have put the respiratory center. No problem, that's correct. But respiratory center is usually um, analogous with the word medulla. And medulla fits all three systems. For changes to heart rate, the chemoreceptors send impulses to the cardiac center. That's in the medulla. For changes to breathing rate, sends it to the respiratory center. That's in the medulla. Changes to the redistribution of blood goes to, uh, long words, the vasomotor control center, but it's in the medulla. So remember medulla, it covers everything. It covers all three of these control systems. Okay, the effects of these nerve impulses to the medulla means the medulla will send out more nerve impulses. If we're going to increase anything, we're going to increase heart rate, we're going to increase breathing rate, we're going to increase blood flow to muscles, then the nerve impulses are going to be, do you know what they are? Can you just jot down in five seconds the sort of nerve impulses we're talking about? Not quick nerve impulses, not fast nerve impulses, but sympathetic nerve impulses. Sympathetic nerve impulses to increase breathing rate, to increase heart rate, and to increase blood flow to muscles. It's sympathetic nerve impulses. When you go into more depth of this stuff, this is a summary document, but in particular, the nerve that goes to the breathing muscles is the phrenic nerve. Extra mark for that, maybe, if you could find it in the exam. The sympathetic nerve that goes down to the heart is going down to the SAN. The sympathetic nerves in the, um, going to the muscles for the redistribution of blood are going to the precapillary sphincter. You can almost make a table out of that when you're revising to sort of summarize what's going on. Okay. So on that third bullet point, increase sympathetic nerve impulses to the breathing muscles. Name the breathing muscles, please. You write in the answer. Two groups of breathing muscles. Everybody okay that we've got this thing of the diaphragm and the intercostal muscles? Diaphragm and intercostals, they're the main breathing muscles. They're working now while you're sat there breathing quite happily. You're not exercising, but they're working to make you inhale air. The other thing you might need to be concerned about for the mechanics of breathing is the effect that the diaphragm and the intercostal muscles have. That's not on this slide, but we can talk about it. When the diaphragm and the intercostal muscles contract, Tell the person next to you, what does that do to the size of the thorax, the size of the chest cavity? And if you're not sure, have a go at breathing in and see the effect. Can you all say or see that contraction of the diaphragm, the intercostal muscles, makes the thorax, the chest cavity, bigger? 
Well, the lungs will then fill that space. That bigger cavity is filled by the lungs. 